What up, guys? Kevin here. Beat my first game of 2024. I'm going to review it right now. And that is Monochrome Mobius. Rights and wrong. Rights and wrongs. Plural. Forgotten. Wow. What a game. What a JRPG. When I think of JRPGs, I am going to think of Monochrome Mobius. Like, just... When you tell someone, like... If you got to explain what a JRPG is, it would be this. A little bit of jank, a little bit of anime, a little bit of quirky um, combat system, but that's also satisfying. Beautiful landscapes and a beautiful cast and also a story that's pretty crazy. That is Monochrome Mobius. Now, this is part of the Udawada Ramono series though this one's much different it is a straight up like a dragon quest game um like just pure jrpg goodness i think the other games are um novel what do they call them anime novels crap uh visual novels duh with a little bit of combat system but from what i understand those are mainly visual novels still from aqua plus and this is aqua plus's first foray into making a proper jrpg so i think if you go into this game with that in mind then that this is i would say a budget title you will be completely surprised at how well it is um my god and should you start here i don't know i looked on the internet it seems like a little bit of a trail situation where like no 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 you got to start here um i think you want to play Prelude to Fallen? I think that's the name. And then this game, and then the mass games. I don't know what order. But this is the one I started with, and I think maybe I would have gotten a little bit more if I played this game in the correct order, maybe in release order. This game just came out. Those other games have been out for a while. But I still enjoyed it. I was still able to follow along. It's a very simple story in terms of um, you are Oshtar, the dude in blue here, um, who I think does appear. I think a lot of these characters appear in later games or earlier games that came out. And a little girl here just comes up and it's your sister. And she escaped another world where her dad was basically getting killed and she had to run off to save herself. And she runs into her brother and her brother thought he was dead. Or Ashtar thought he was dead, so he just go on a long, epic journey to find him, and it plays out, I would say, beautifully. But yeah, there's some stretches where I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> what are we doing? What the hell are we doing? But it's all fun. You just go on all these adventures because you need to get bigger, you can get stronger. This guy named Dika Tomo takes you under his wing, um, and you train under him to become a badass. And then stuff happens, you get a mask and you get superpowers, along with your rival slash buddy here, Mitsuyaki, I don't know the name. (laughs) I I played many hours with these folks, and we'll get to one of the flaws here, but some of the names, I'm like, huh? It don't don't really uh, fall off the tongue that smoothly. But yeah, the story, it's a big, long, epic adventure. It's pretty long. It took me like like 60 hours to beat the game. I still got a little bit of side stuff I need to do. Um, but yeah, what I really, really love about this game is the location, the locales. It's very oriental theme. The garb, the ceremonious garb, and just the way everyone looks and acts. Um, it's just so fun to look at, stare at. The lighting in this game is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Now, we'll get to the cons. The game's not beautiful in some areas, but just on a whole, just the way the game looks, it feels so real and lived in. The game has so much atmosphere. The world itself is like kind of a long strip um, that can take quite a while if you're just walking across it. You do get like a chocobo-type creature, I think about halfway through the game, to help you traverse the land way easier um but it reminded me a lot of dragon's dogma if you play dragon's dogma i love that world so much it's just like a really long strip of land that feels just so real and uh vibrant and just the atmosphere 
really um, just kicks you in the balls. Same here. I just love being in this world and just traveling around. It was awesome. It was awesome. The combat system, it is just straight up just turn-based combat, um, like a Dragon Quest. Loved it. Um, you got this ring system here that, fortunately, I didn't pay too much attention to, but that's kind of the gimmick. You're on this ring system. If you stagger the enemies, you jump up into the little circles. And basically, every time you go around the circle, 360, that's when your next turn comes up. And of course, if you go into the little circle, it's going to take less time for you to go around it. So you get to go much faster. And I would say there is some um, strategery in that. But this game was pretty easy. I probably should have played it on a harder difficulty. I'll get to you. I'll get to why the game was easy here in a minute. But yeah, I didn't really pay too much attention. I had a lot of skills and a lot of MP. Like the game just overloads you with MP um, when you level up. And of course, it gives you bonus stats that you can select yourself. If you give yourself a lot of MP, you can use some pretty powerful attacks um, that just annihilates everything. So I didn't have to pay too much attention there, but still fun. Still fun. The characters, you got Oshtor, you got Shunya. Oshtor, the guy in blue, is the main character. He's pretty much your straight, uh, easygoing protagonist. Takes things maybe a little too seriously, but there, there is a fun side to him and a joyous side that does show that I really appreciate. You got Shunya, the little girl, a little kind of a... Um, she reminds me of like a third sister of Milium and Altina of the Trail series. Like just a combination of those two. Very sweet and innocent, but a little bit of a knucklehead, I would say. And then you got your rival here, Mitsuyuki. <laughs> Dude with the big sword. Um, basically, you show up at the capital and you two fight, and then that's when the guy comes and takes you both in, and he just joins your party. It's fun having a rival like that that joins your party, and just that bond grows. This game is the ultimate power of friendship game. 10 out of 10 there. And then you got uh, Moonchika, the hot girl, and I think she's kind of the healer, but again, I have no issues um, healing in this game. So um, yeah, she's cute. She's kind of the mom of the group. There's a great scene where um, Ashtor and Mitsuyuki, again, I'm butchering that name, they're fighting over who signed up first, who enrolled under uh, Dikatoma, the dude that's training you. <laughs> but in the earlier in the scene, early in the game, those two, when they meet, just knock each other out. And she's like, oh, I actually signed up while you guys were knocked out. So I'm your senior. <laughs> and even Shunya here is like, yeah, you guys were knocked out. Uh, I signed up as well. And it's just a funny little scene. There's a lot of funny scenes in this game that just makes it, again, JRPGs are the greatest genre. It's just, it feels so whole. The ups, the downs, the drama, the comedy. It's all there. And it's all here in Monochrome Mobius. Um... <laughs> And Halu, Halu's a little bunny mascot. Every JRPG has to have a mascot. The best. He is the best mascot in games, period. He's such an ass. He will, he's so based and he will speak what's on his mind. And I mean, even without him, the game would probably be near perfect with him. The game is practically perfect. He's so fun to be around. He just says what's on his mind. And he's so cute. I have a friend. I keep uh, sending her screenshots of him because she thinks he's so cute. I think he's a little alien-y and weird looking, but she loves him. Um, all right. And the game, very long game, but a very beautiful, um, I would say, ending. But, of course, kind of leaves it on a cliffhanger. But, again, I don't know how much this ties into the other game, so maybe it isn't. But I really do hope we get a Monochrome Mobius 2. Let me get to the cons. Um, again, it's a budget. I think it's Aqua Plus's first like proper JRPG game they made. And it shows, but they concentrated on areas that and executed perfectly in those areas. And just some other areas are like there's a lot of um 
invisible walls. Uh, the game, though, looks well. There's low textures in some areas. Performance-wise, PC has some issues. PlayStation 5 has issues. It doesn't run at 60 or stay at 60 on PS5. That's why I kept going back and forth, because I love the ease and views on the PS5, but PC, it just ran beautifully with some drops. Um, until I realized, oh yeah, I'm playing on a VR our TV, and I reset in my PS5 recently. So I went in and checked um, allow VRR on non-supported games, and it made it way, way better, way more tolerable. So if you have a VRR television and playing on PS5, I would suggest uh, the PS5 version with, when you turn on that VRR setting. Uh, the PC is great, too. It looks beautiful. But yeah, it's still a budget game when you play it. You'll see, but it's still like on a whole just looks beautiful. I love being in this world. Um, that there's parts of the story again, like I said earlier, like what are we even doing? Like what what's our goal? <laughs> um, why are we doing this? But you got to remember that is kind of part of the story. You're just training under Dikotomo. You're going and doing all these trials until you become a big badass and you're ready. Um. And it's just one of those, like, you just got to be there for the ride. Just enjoy the ride. Again, it took me 60 hours. I've seen some say it's like 40 hours. Um, if you just enjoy the ride for those 60 hours, you're going to have a great time. If you're playing it to get to the end, yeah, you're probably not going to enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot of fetch quests. A lot of the side stuff is fetch quests. But I love being in this world, so I didn't mind just walking. Like, I didn't even fast travel at all. I would walk everywhere. Now, um, what's also great about this game, get back to the pros, leveling up, leveling up. The way it works is once you kind of become over level, you can go up to an enemy, attack them. And if you're way too over level, it will just kill the enemy right there and give you all the experience, all the money, and then all the crafting items. And yeah, <laughs> it's the easiest way to level up. And I did it to a point where I wasn't really fighting that often. Like, the fights felt more meaningful. If I was fighting something, it was either a big enemy or a boss. Um, or I accidentally uh, walked into an enemy and didn't attack it. But it's just so easy to level up that way, and it's so satisfying. I would just walk around and just attack enemies just for the easy XP and just level up a ton. Just because I enjoyed being in that world. I'm like, I'm just going to hang out in this area. Um, let's see. Yeah, this game is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Hmm. Again, like the names. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like racist here. Not racist at all. But a lot of it's like, huh? Una do hubu. Like, I think your starting area is una come away. And it's a lot like that. Two of the characters... Muna Chika and Matsuyuki Yaki. It's a lot of stuff like that. I mean, the name of the series, Urawada Ramono. It's a lot of that. Where I'm, where it's just not sticky. It's just not sticky for me. Where I'll see characters, I'm like, oh, that's that uh, one with the bunch of. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but again, like, it's a very like a traditional looking type setting, and very cool. It's a very cool game. Um, everyone's kind of a furry like everyone ha kind of has a uh, something up with their ears like they're part animal um, so the furry community will probably get behind this I'll allow it but yeah that is monochrome Mobius rights and wrongs forgotten it was a lot of rights and it will not be forgotten my final score of this game is 9.5 out of 10 and that 0.5 I'm gonna be honest I mean just those little just those little things I don't know why I sh I'm not giving it a 10. I loved it. I loved it. Um, it's a game that I don't think many people will play. It's a game that, okay, maybe if it's not on sale, but when it does, definitely pick it up. And if you go in expecting, you know, I don't want to say a budget game, but something that's not you know, high tip-top quality like a Dragon Quest game or a Final Fantasy game, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. I can easily, like, I just would not be surprised 
if one day we're all going to look back at this game, it's going to be played by millions and everyone's going to be like, yeah, that game was awesome. Do I see that happening? No. Would I be surprised? Absolutely not. That's how great the game is. All right, I got to go though. 9.5 for Monochrome Mobius, Rights and Wrongs Forgotten. Please let's get a sequel. Until then, I'm going to go play the other Udawada Ramono games and have a blast. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Later.